Hello friends, welcome back. We are playing some Noble Fates again today. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on the characters I choose for my first team. There are some basic rules while picking. I think one of the important ones are choosing the relationships between your people. Some of them are not going to like each other. You know, you're not going to really want to team up an elf and an orc. You know what I mean? So first you'll see their names in blue and then right underneath you're gonna see what their job title was before entering into your kingdom so we have a designer so he's gonna be a good builder he's gonna like building um, we can see that they prefer me medium kingdoms which is great to start because if he does die later on we'll have a pretty small kingdom he is a rock breaker so like a miner he's gonna like mining uh, the three key players I like to keep are gonna be my builders my cook slash farmers and hauling I know hauling doesn't sound as important, but all of the other jobs are gonna get kind of crazy. And on the right, we're gonna see what they don't like, what they're not good at doing, and who they would be compatible with if you're deciding to do some marriages later on. Let's go ahead and go with Barth because he is our builder. Um, but as you see, not everyone is gonna stay and Guts doesn't wanna stay. So let's just look really quick what their traits were. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter too much because somebody's going to die pretty soon. So before I even press play, there are a couple things I know that I'm going to start out with doing. First, I'm going to build a stockpile. It doesn't have to be too big, but make sure you select it and create the priority to one just so that this is our number one stockpile. It's not going to stay number one forever, but for the first good while in the game. And I'm going to select all and create number one priority if it's a junk item i really don't want it there because it's not going to give you any prestige and it's not going to help you the second thing i do when starting a game i will disable their autonomous job assignments and all that is is the order that they're doing things um, you don't have to mess with this but in the early early part of the game i always do that and then you can clear it off later and make them autonomous again. Um, but I know that firefighting, I want them all to do. He's not very good at nursing, so I'm not gonna make them do that. Instead, I'll make them start on whatever they're actually good at first, because he doesn't like hauling either. I want them all to haul, and now I just go through picking who's good and what is the job priorities. I don't really assign anyone to guarding just because it's not too important early game. The third thing that I make sure that I have on day one is at least a blueprint of each noble's house. Like I said in another video, I'm going to go ahead and create their bedrooms um, right next to each other so I can turn this into a chateau later on and that'll just be a lot more prestige for our kingdom. Ah, I always do that. So once I get that blueprint built, I can click on the bedroom type and see that I do in fact have a one, two, and three tiered bedroom. I'm going to create the tier four and the storage and the dining room and then start to replace the ramshack walls because if any invaders come and they bomb your place, it'll catch on fire and it's just a complete nightmare. I am going to create their schedule. This is kind of like the job assignment sheet. However, this is what they are doing throughout the day. I want to deal with more of the sunshine. I don't want them outside at night because they don't really like it if it's not well lit. So I'll do something like this. They'll be working uh, for a good 10 hours every day. They'll have time to do anything that they want, eat or catch up on a couple more hours of sleep. I like to keep them on the same schedule when I'm starting a new game just so I know exactly what's getting done. At this point, I'm pretty comfortable pressing play because they do have some stuff that they need to take care of, um, but you can see that they're not really doing anything right now. They've already done everything they needed to do. So we're gonna get some wood and then they're gonna start building their house. 
So this is a lot of wood, I know. However, while they are doing this, I'm going to figure out my food situation. So soon enough, a traveler comes through and I'm able to start trading. A little tip that I like to do when I'm a little bit further in, um, and I have some broken items, some junk items, things that I've swapped out of the belongings of my characters, and I will sell those things. I never pay full price in my coins. I'll make my farm right off to the side really close just because it is so small to start out with. You want to keep the amount of tiles that, that they have to walk as short as possible just for efficiency and so I like to keep a pretty compact village. So the size of the farm that we're able to build depends on our farmers and what their skill levels are. Not good. Zero. Zero. That means that we're only going to be able to farm corn Pretty soon we can farm some pumpkins, and once we unlock grapes, we can unlock wine. That's where our money, uh, most efficient way to get money in Noble Fates is by renting out your different bedrooms. And this doesn't even have to be really a bougie place. It can be a two by two ramshackled roof, but as long as you're able to rent it out, you're gonna be getting some sort of income and more people are gonna be coming to your village to even stay with you. Um, and that will get your relations up and your world will start expanding. And so now that we have somewhere that we can rent, um, because it hasn't been built yet, it's only gonna be a 1C prestige because it's not, it's not even there yet. But something like this would go for maybe 10 cents a day if it had good walls. You can have something that's really 50 coins a day at one point I had a really nice uh, two-bedroom house that it was always full and at some point you know I had 10,000 coins and I just you know people were robbing me all the time and I, I didn't know where to store my money so I just dug in the mines a couple of levels and I created some barriers where I kept my safe I was able to start building underground which I, I can do a whole other video about that but other than that, those are really the things that I like to set up in early game. My next move is going to be, you know, fixing my food sources until my corn is ready. The last thing that I want to mention is talking more about their prestige. Um, there is a belongings tab at the bottom that will tell you exactly how much each person wants and how much they have. Your prestige right here in yellow is what they have and the ambition is what they want. So they're gonna remain happy until you start growing your kingdom and they're gonna start wanting things. Um, making sure that they own those specific wanted items um, in this page is going to be a lot easier than just trying to equip the item or selecting the bedroom. So we're gonna give our, our main guy the biggest bedroom one and that awesome so thank you so much for watching go ahead and leave a question down in the comments all right bye